Hello and welcome to another episode of Yule Acres. Today we are going to talk about the discussion, is peat moss even sustainable? Should you use it? Well, I've got some arguments for and against it. Let's get started. Hello and welcome. Before we jump into our main talk about, about talking about whether or not peat moss is actually sustainable, should you actually use it in your gardening? Let us know if you're gaining value out of these videos, please don't forget to subscribe, click on that bell for notifications. Not only does it help us out with the YouTube algorithm, but it helps to spread this knowledge so that way we can continue to learn from each other with each other. First off, what is peat moss? Peat moss is plant dead rotting material, wood, moss, other detritus type material that has died long ago and is being compressed in a heavy bog scenario in the far cold north. The By far the largest source of it in the world comes from central Canada where they have over 25% of the entire world supply in a very small located area. Now there are other locations where peat moss is prevalent. You have it in Russia, Northern Germany, Ireland, Finland, Swindland, Sweden, basically wherever you have a cold environment that you have a slow process of decomposition that helps to prevent the material from fully quickly breaking down is where you're going to find these peat bogs. But by far the largest source of it is located in central Canada. Now this material is often mined, meaning that you take the plant material, dig it out of the ground, and then you dry it out a little bit and compress it, package it in a bag, and then it is shipped all over the world. Now when I say it's physically mined, that's what I mean, is they're physically taking large materials of it, scooping it out of the ground, and packaging it. Now why is peat moss so popular? It's a very light, absorbent material that is slightly acidic, but it really helps with water retention. And it's light enough that it can easily be shipped all over the world. And there is such a large supply of it, meaning that there's literally hundreds of millions of acres in the world where this peat is being produced. And so there's a significantly large supply of it making it a very cheap material. In my own personal area, at my local farm and ranch store, I can purchase a three cubic foot bale of peat moss for $16. As far as soil amendments go, that is very cheap. You're not gonna find a better nutrient that has such high water retention. The only one that can actually rival it as far as water retention, high quality, and its widespread use is going to be coconut core. Now, that is the thing that we're talking about, is there is an age-old argument that says, don't use peat moss, use coconut core. Should I use coconut core? Should I use peat moss? And there is a constant battle debate between the two on which you should use. Now, for years, there's been a debate that says, don't use peat moss because it is not sustainable whatsoever. And in the last 20 to 30 years, as coconut industry has grown more, as they're using the husk hairs around the coconut much more often that has grown largely as a great substitute for peat moss to be used now there is a great argument saying that hey coconut's a fruit it grows off you're not hurting the source of the coconut itself and there are significantly large coconut groves throughout the world where millions upon millions of pounds of coconuts and millions upon millions of pounds of coconut core is produced and not only that, but it's a byproduct of the coconut itself, further utilizing the product. So that is why the argument is so for it. There's actually been a backlash fighting back though, in particular from the Canadian Sporangium Moss Association, trying to argue that peat moss in itself is not such that bad. Now in doing studies, they have found that it takes on average anywhere between 15 and 25 years of plant decaying material to form one inch worth of sporangia moss on the bogs. And so by argument, you only have to make certain that something is sustainable is that you are harvesting it less often than it is being produced. Meaning you are producing much more sporangia moss in the bank than you're actually harvesting. So you're getting a net gain overall. And according to a few environmental science and biology professors from various 
places throughout the United States, it has been considered not to be a sustainable product because in many cases, it is being harvested much faster than it is actually being produced. In counterpart though, from the so as we mentioned before, there are many professors in the United States that are claiming that is actually being harvested at a much quicker weight than it is being replaced. Now they're doing comparisons from Russia, Sweden, Germany, many other locations. However, when looking at side-by-side -side comparisons to combat this claim, the peat moss that is not sustainable, a study performed by Canadian Sporangium Moss Association. Now keep in mind, this is from a source that is highly promotional of peat moss, but I personally like to see it as a highly reputable source. So take a look at your sources and whether or not you consider that to be reputable. In my personal opinion, I think it is, but they do represent the peat moss industry of Canada. So that is to take it with a grain of salt. But in the study that they concluded, they found that the crate, they looked at how much peat moss was being harvested versus how much was being produced naturally. In Canada, they have over 281 million acres of peatland, which makes up a total of approximately 25% of the world's total land area of peat bogs. Of that total, 41,000 acres is currently being harvested. According to the study, they have found that there is 60 times less than what is actually being harvested or produced. Or, put in another way, only 2% of the peat moss that is being harvested versus what is being produced. So, what that looks like is for every 2% of peat moss that is being created or that is being harvested or mined for human use or for whatever source you use it for, there is another 98% that is actually being produced in the bogs itself, which means they are only harvesting 1 60th of the overall amount, meaning it is a much sustainable harvest amount. That's why I personally like to use peat moss. It's a very great high quality material and I personally find it very sustainable. As long as you use a great sustainable source of peat moss, meaning Central Canada, that's where I personally get mine, but it's also where most of the peat moss in North America comes from. That's why I like it. As long as are you being sustainable and harvesting in a very, as long as you harvest it in a responsible manner, there is no reason to say it is a horrible product and you shouldn't use it because it's not sustainable. That just isn't true. As far as Canadian peat moss goes, it is a very great high quality product. Now, I'm not a backer of them. It's just I purchased all that I use. It's just something that I have personally used. Now, other sources, is it uh, used sustainably or not? I don't know. This just comes from this one source of Canada that makes up a total of 25%, the largest number one source of peat moss in the world. Now, there is another reason why I personally like using peat moss over coconut core. Coconut core is a very great high quality source, but when they store a lot of the coconuts, when they travel them, just to make things really easy, they will actually let them float in salt water. That coconut is going to soak up a significant amount of salt with the salt water, meaning depending on the source of your coconut core you get it from, is going to be a very high salty content. And my plants cannot handle that. When I've done side by side comparison grows, when looking at coconut core versus peat moss, my plants with the coconut core have has always struggled because of that higher salt content. In a side-by-side -side comparison that Utah State University did in comparing hydroponically grown plants in peat moss versus coconut core, they found that most of the sources of coconut core that they had had high amounts of salt content, which drastically made it so the plants that they were growing suffered because of that and the peat moss ones did very well. Now in counterbalance, Auburn University did a very similar study where they did a side-by-side -side hydroponics study comparison between coconut core and peat moss. They found that yes, the coconut core did have higher salt content, but as long as you rinse that salt content out, drain it out, or you source your coconut core from a location that did not have a high salt content, they grew equally well and had equal water retention rates. So it comes down to where are you sourcing it from and your own personal 
benefits. Is one better than the other? No, they are both great high quality products that I like both. It just comes down to personal thoughts and personal preference. When it comes down to me, it's can I get it? What's most expensive? Because they work equally well and I view them to be equally sustainable. What's your thoughts? Do you think that my analysis is correct? Do you think my analysis is not? Let us know in the comments below what you think is the better source for water retention of the age old argument of coconut core or peat moss. Thank you so much for joining us. We are so glad you were able to be here. If you're gaining value out of these videos, if you like what we're doing, don't forget to click on that subscribe button, click on that bell for notifications, so that way you can continue to get notification on new videos coming out all the time. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time.